Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us both in person and online. I'm Bruce Gordon with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. You know, we frequently talk about uh, the tragic consequences of people who make poor decisions when they're behind the wheel. Those are important stories to tell. They are reminders of the lives that are impacted by poor decisions and the, the lives of loved ones who uh, also are impacted by these, these poor decisions when people are, are driving behind the wheel. But Minnesotans also need to know that most people are making wise choices when they get into a car. And seatbelts are a great example of that. Most people in our state buckle up when they, when they get into a vehicle. Today you're going to hear from from serious injury or even death because they chose to wear a seatbelt. It's an important message to hear because even if you're doing everything right, there may be another driver on the road who's making a bad decision that could impact uh, your uh, driving and uh, your experience. You're going to hear from several speakers today. Donna Berger, the director of the Office of Traffic Safety, will talk about the importance of the extra seatbelt enforcement campaign. You'll hear from four individuals from different walks of life, but they have one thing in common. A seatbelt saved their life. Keanu Stewart, Josh Cramber, Stephanie Corbel, Lesueur County Sheriff Sergeant David Struckman. You'll have the uh, spellings in the advisories that we, we handed out. And lastly, you'll hear from Lieutenant Tiffany Nielsen from the Minnesota State Patrol. And before we get started today, we want to uh, welcome the students from Josh Cramber School, uh, St. Francis Xavier School. They're joining us online today to watch their, their classmates speak and hear the other important messages from the, uh, the speakers here today. Donna Berger. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. When you hear about a traffic crash and there was a loss of life or a serious injury, instinctive, instinctively you might think, I wonder if they were wearing a seatbelt. Why is that? Well, we'd like to think it's because wearing a seatbelt has become an automatic behavior for most of us. It's the law, and that law has made a difference. Enforcement and awareness help. And parents hopefully are setting good examples for their children and the habit of buckling up has become the common sense thing to do. Thankfully, most Minnesotans are making the common sense decision to wear their seatbelt. The 2015 Minnesota Observational Seatbelt Survey shows that over 94% compliance for front seat occupants. That's good news, but none of us should be satisfied with the result until it's 100% compliance. We hear the excuses. I'm not hurting anybody else except myself. It's a victimless crime. People still die even though they wear their seatbelt or I'm a good driver. A seatbelt is not a 100% guarantee you'll survive a crash, but it greatly increases your chance of survival. And if you're unbelted and get into a crash, it's, a vi it's violent. You get thrown about and you can injure other passengers or be completely ejected from your vehicle. You may be a good driver, but others aren't. You need to protect yourself, and the seatbelt is your best defense. Also, your death or injuries don't just impact you. You have family and friends who have to wake up every day wishing you'd taken that three seconds to click that belt. In Minnesota, seatbelts aren't optional. It's the law. If you're the driver, make sure you don't turn that key until every person in your car has buckled up. And if you're the passenger, speak up. Speak up to other passengers and speak up to the driver until everyone's buckled up. Troopers, officers, and deputies statewide will be working overtime hours May 23rd through June 5th during the national Click It or Ticket seatbelt campaign. They will be working specifically to enforce the seatbelt laws. As part of that campaign, Minnesota law enforcement will also be participating in the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration Border to Border Challenge. This effort will include more than 20 states and focus on seatbelt violations from 6 to 10 p.m. on May 23rd. Nationally and in Minnesota, the crash statistics show that a higher percentage of people who died in crashes at night were not buckled up 
compared to fatalities during daytime hours. To talk about why seatbelts aren't just a good idea, but can be a lifesaver, I'd like to introduce Kiana Stewart. Kiana will be featured in the Department of Public Safety's seatbelt advertisement campaign. Hi, my name is Kiana Stewart, and this past summer in August, I was involved in a car accident on 61 or 316 on my way home from Hastings. I was leaving a friend's house on a normal night, and I didn't want to get tired, so I left earlier than I would have. And unexpectedly, I dozed off on my way home and rolled my car three times through the ditch. I crossed over into another lane, and thank God there was no other car coming the other direction. Just automatically, when I got in my car, I put on my seatbelt, which is just a normal thing I always have done, and it ended up saving my life that night. I'm very, very blessed for giving the opportunity to survive and not be injured in my accident. Um, seat belts, have, I've always put them on in the car. If I never saw my friend putting one on, I was always that person who was, okay, let's put our seat belts on, and they'd always give me that look, but now I have a story to tell and a reason why I've always told them to put on their seat belts. When I got out of my car after the accident, it did not seem real at all. I, the sounds and everything that just happened throughout the rolls, it did not create an image like what the car actually looked like when I got out of it. And when the trooper arrived, he went straight to the people who came to the scene of the accident that heard it from a mile and a half away. And he asked them if the driver was still in the car and if she was alive, he or she. And they said, yeah, she is standing by our car. She's not bleeding. She's okay. She doesn't need an ambulance. She walked out of the car to find help on the side of the road. And when I walked up to him after he asked where I was, there were tears in his eyes. And it was amazing to see how much people care about you. And just because I put on a seatbelt, I got to survive and see how much people care about me. A seatbelt is a decision that could save your life. If I wasn't wearing mine, I don't think I would be here to tell people to put one on, and I don't think I would have been able to survive that night. The night was also eight days before my 17th birthday, which was a little eerie to know that I was spared eight more days to turn 17. And I hope that every other teen all over the the world puts on their seatbelt every day so they can be lucky enough if they get in the position to survive an accident like I did. Thank you. Hi, I'm Josh and a few years ago I got in a very car bad car crash. Um, I thankfully was not injured because I was wearing my seatbelt. It mm -hmm. saved my life. Um, the crash was just very chaotic. Um, I ended up kind of blacking out for a bit during it, and when I woke up, it was all dusty and hazy in the vehicle, and I didn't know what was going on. I was really winded. Um, it's really weird thinking that a little bit of cloth saved my life. Um, anybody else would think that, too, if the same thing had happened. Um, it's just insane. Um, I guess... If I was going to tell anybody else um, to wear their seatbelt, what I would say is it's like insurance. You, you never know when you're going to need it. It's going to save your life, and you don't know when it's going to happen. My name is Stephanie Corbell. Uh, I had, it was me, my two kids that are in the audience, and my nephew along with me. Um... From the time that my kids were born, I guess from the time that I can remember, seatbelts have always been a big yes. You don't leave the car, you don't, you know, drive away unless that seatbelt is fastened. And I made sure from the time my kids were born that they had the proper seats, um, that they had the right seats for their age and their weight. Um, Every time that you know we we hit the road, I made sure that they were they were buckled. 
So before the crash had happened, I had actually pulled over because this, uh, my nephew and my kids were in the back seat of my pickup, and they were kind of wrestling around, and I just didn't think that they were correctly seat belted, that they were safe enough, because they just seemed like they had too much wiggle room. So I had ended up pulling over, readjusting their seat belt. Within two minutes after leaving, um, that is when the crash occurred. And I just think back, you know, if, if I wouldn't have stopped and readjusted their seatbelt, what would have been the outcome? And at times I don't even want to think of it because it, it could have been deadly. Um, so with, with that being said, um, yeah, we, you know, the only thing that was wrong with the kids was that they had the, the bruising from the seatbelt. Um, we all came out, we're all alive. My nephew is not here with us, but he is a well and living. And knowing that I seat belted them correctly re reassures me that they do save lives. And no matter how little or how big, you know, make sure that your kids have the proper seat belt or safety equipment, car seat, booster seat, whichever. Um, no matter what age, just you want to make sure that your kids are properly because if I would have, if anything would have happened to my kids, it would have, I don't even want to think about it. Um, so I can't highly stress enough to make sure your kids are properly seat belted in a vehicle. Hi, I'm uh, Sergeant Dave Struckman from the Leesore County Sheriff's Department. I've been a deputy sheriff for Leesore County for 38 years. And in that time, I've wrote uh, many crashes, over thousands and thousands, I'm sure. But as far as um, people being killed wearing seatbelts, I can only remember cutting one person out in my entire career that was wearing a seatbelt and got killed. And what I'm gonna share with you is an incident that happened on October, or August 27th, 2015. I had just cleared working with the uh, Mankato State Patrol on a double fatal car, or a crash we had in our county. And I was on my way home. I was tired and I thought, you know, I'm only three miles from home if I take this gravel road and it's a six mile trip around the other track. So I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go these country roads. It's a nice day and I'm just gonna putt along here. And I'm driving along and I come up a hill and all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye I've seen a flash. And before I could do anything, this vehicle was coming directly at me. Um, he hit me in the left front wheel of my patrol car and pushed me into a ditch and I struck a culvert. Um, I was unconscious for a short period of time. My canine partner was laying in my lap crying in pain when I woke and I couldn't help him. I didn't want to move. I knew my training said, Dave, you got to sit here. You can't move. But I was able to get the mic out and call my dispatch and say, hey, I had a crash. But I didn't say that. I turned around and said, I need an ambulance out here. This is where I'm at. And they said, how many you got injured, Dave? <clears throat> and I said, me, for sure. And then it was total chaos. We had helicopters coming. We had troopers coming from all over. Um, I was pretty shook up. I uh, went to the hospital, a hospital where I know all the nurses and doctors, and it was like I was family. Um, I was hugged, my hand was held. I just wanted to sleep. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I just wanted to sleep. I sustained a, a pretty good brain injury uh, from the crash. I had back injury. I had a, they thought I broke my leg. I had to be extricated from the car. The door was cut off. And it shouldn't have happened. Um, 
I stress to people that, and my young officers, as you're driving along, you don't know what's going to happen. If that person's going to blow a sign and he's going to come out at you, in this case, 55 miles an hour, he comes through the sign and hit me. People need to know this. And if you don't take all the precautions that you have by wearing that belt, you could die. And in Minnesota, you know, I always see people with sunglasses, and they wear their sunglasses because it protects their eyes. I see them wear hats because it protects their bald heads like mine from the sun. I see them spray themselves with bug spray. They take that time to protect themselves from mosquitoes. But yet there are still people out there that don't take that time to buckle up. And I know that I wouldn't be here today if I wouldn't have took that time to buckle that belt. Thanks. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Tiffany Nielsen with the State Patrol. As law enforcement, we're always looking for people violating the law. And when it comes to seatbelt violations, we issue citations. And the reason we issue citations is this last small percentage that doesn't buckle up, need that negative reinforcement, unfortunately, to get on board. But we hope by listening today to these survivors, these folks that went out, I'll tell you, there's two things all these people have in common. One, they put their seatbelt on. And number two, they did not know that was their day. So be prepared in the ways you can prepare, and wearing that seatbelt is the way to prepare. You don't know when day is going to be your day that you're going to be grateful that you put that seatbelt on. Over the next uh, couple weeks, we'll have extra police all around the state looking for seatbelt compliance. We'll be stopping drivers that aren't compliant. Our hope is that people make the decision without meeting an officer, without getting a ticket. Uh, what we want Minnesotans to get in the habit of doing is wearing their seatbelt every time, every seat, child, I liked what Stephanie said, size, doesn't matter. Uh, from infants to adults, all shapes and sizes should be putting their seatbelt on every single time. We don't want people to say, if only my loved one had worn a seatbelt, if only they had listened to me, if only they were coming home today had they had their seatbelt on. Those are those devastating stories and we're really fortunate to have these men and women here who survived over, like Josh said, a piece of cloth. How amazing is that? So buckle up every seat, every time, and your family will be grateful for that. Any questions from, for our uh, survivors? Tell me, did the driver survive your crash? He did. Why yep. He did. Um, he had uh, minor injuries from it. Uh, there was four kids in the car. Uh, I believe one of them had a broken collarbone. They all were wearing their belts. The photos from yours is on, are online. Photos yes. from your accident are online. Correct. Any other questions? And then Stephanie? Yes. Yeah. Just I, I, I kind of got caught up there. You were, you, you literally stopped moments before your accident? I did. Um, I stopped. They were kind of bouncing around in the back seat, and I just didn't feel that they were belted enough, or s they, they just didn't seem like they were belted. So I had stopped, pulled over, um, checked on their seat belts, tightened them up, made sure that they were restrained, and no more than two minutes later, um, it was a T-bone accident, and I was doing about 60, probably about 58, 60 miles an hour, and a car had cut in front of me, and I, I had no time to react. So, um, I, it was right in between Buffalo, Minnesota, and Monticello on County Road 113 when the accident had happened, and I mean, I completely. Yeah, it, it, honestly, I didn't even see it coming. Like I said, I, there was no time for me to react. Um, so I couldn't put my brake on. I couldn't, nothing. I, it was yeah, just, just yep. And I had stopped. It, stopped. Yep. And I just, I think that if I wouldn't have did that, what the outcome would have been if they weren't properly restrained and what, you know, what more injuries that they could have sustained than just the seatbelt bruising that they had.